Welcome to HTML5 Tutorial 7, Forms and iframes. In this video we'll be looking at how to create forms for data entry as well as how to place a web page inside another web page. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. Forms in HTML allow us to get data from the users of our website. For example, the fields on a website for entering your email or username and password, etc. There are many different input types. If you've ever filled out an online survey, you've probably seen most of them. Text boxes, check boxes, radio buttons, buttons, etc. I should mention that this section may be a little boring as you generally require another programming language to actually do anything with the data that the users would enter. For now, it's useful to know what you're looking at. The form tag can be basic, but can also be quite a busy tag. The attributes that are commonly used are action, which is used to tell the browser what, the, what page to send the submitted data to. There is also method, which tells the browser how to send the data to the page. There is also the name attribute that works just like it does with any other element. There is also the target attribute which works just like it does with links. Here we have an example of a form that will send data to the mypage.php web page and will send it by post. The form is called myform. Inside our form tags we use the input tag. The input tag allows us to create the actual data entry elements on our web page. The input tag requires the attribute called type. The type attribute tells the input element what kind of input it is, for example, text, button, checkbox, etc. In the example here, we have a text field that might be used for a username. Now we have to talk about the submit button. The submit button is a special input type that appears as a button. The submit button tells the browser to submit the data in the form to the page we specified in the action attribute of the form. Depending on what we specified in the method attribute of the form, the data will either be sent through the URL, which is called get, or hidden through the header of the web request, which is called post. Okay, now that we have a good idea of the kind of things we will find in forms, let's add a basic form to our index.html document. We'll add a form section and get a name, age, and gender. Then we'll finish it up with a submit button. Okay, so going to come over to our folder here, index, we're going to open it up in Notepad++. And we want to add a form section, so we'll scroll down and we'll do it after our, uh, our images. So after our images, we're going to create a form section. We'll do h2, forms, h2. Okay, now we're going to create our form tag. And we won't put any attributes in our form tag for the moment because we're not going to actually do anything with our form. So we'll close off our form tag. Now inside we're going to create a box for the name. So we'll put it, the text name and a colon. And we'll put a, uh, a break line in there. And now we'll put in our input. So we're going to use the input tag. Then we need to set the type attribute. And we'll make that equal to text. And we'll set the name to equal name. All right, and we'll do a self-closing tag on that. Now we'll do another line break, so br, and we'll do the age, and then another line break. And now we'll get another input, so we're going to do input, and inside of our input, we're going to set the type to equal a number and we'll set the name of this element to equal h and we'll self close we'll do another line break and we'll do gender and we'll do another line break and we'll do another input so this time we're going to do an input uh, radio button so we're going to do input type equals radio and now for a radio button to work uh, all of the parts of the, of the same radio button section have to have the same name so we're going to set the name to equal gender and we'll set the value to equal male first we'll self close tag and we'll put the word male on the end Okay, now we're going to do a line break, so br close tag, 
and we're going to do another input Whoop. input and the type is going to be a radio button again and the name has to be the same so gender and then we'll set the value to equal female and we'll close tag and we'll put female on the end there and now we'll do br break and now we'll put our submit button so we're going to do input and the type this time is going to equal submit and we're going to set the value of the button to equal submit we'll put a capital s on it because this is what's going to appear on the button all right and then we'll self-close that okay so we've written our form so we've got a a name an age and a gender where they can choose either male or female uh, with the use of a radio button so let's save this and we'll open up our index okay so if we scroll down we got our images we got our form so here we, we can put in our name so we can put in drafts and we can put in an age so I could do I don't know say that I'm a hundred say that I'm a hundred and you can also use the incrementers and de decrementers and then we've got our radio buttons here so we can select either male or female and when you click on one of them it'll deselect the other one you can only have one selected okay and then we can click our submit button and it'll submit back to this page and if you're really interested it sends it by get by default and you can see it up in the um, up in the top browser URL after the question mark we have our name equals traps and our age equals 100 and our gender equals male okay cool okay so that looks nice but it doesn't really do much and sadly it won't do much until you move on to a language like PHP so to make this a little more interesting let's look at the button tag there is a separate button tag that can be used in and out of the form tag we can use this button to run some JavaScript in its on click attribute. It also has a type attribute that can be used to set up a reset button for a form. We haven't looked into JavaScript yet, as it's quite a big topic and will be covered separately. However, it is important to know that JavaScript is around and plays a large role in today's websites. So let's add a button element to our index.html, just under our form. We'll use a very basic line of JavaScript to make a pop up message. Okay, so we'll come back to our code. And just underneath our form, we're going to create a button. And actually, we'll put it inside a paragraph. So we'll put it inside some paragraph tags, just so it gets some nice spacing. We're going to use the button tag. And we're going to set its type to equal a button. And we're going to set its on click attribute to equal alert open brackets single quotes I am a script exclamation mark then we'll close our single quotes close off our brackets and then we'll close off our double quotes for the on click attribute and we'll close off the tag and then inside the button we're gonna just we'll just call it a button and this is a text that will appear on the button and then we'll close off our button tag like so now we can save this and we'll come back over to our browser refresh our page and we can come down and we've got a button now if we click the a button it'll pop up saying I am a script and you have to click OK to close it and you can continue clicking it and it'll keep popping up your browser will probably tell you that the page keep current, keeps trying to create pop-ups do you want to block them okay cool so let's move on to a more interesting and functioning topic iframes iframes are a powerful tool for static websites we can use them to load another website or web page inside our web page the iframe is very easy to use and can be changed with the target attribute on links the iframe tag is easy to use. We must use the source attribute to specify another source web page to put in the frame. Other attributes we can use is width, height, and frame border. 
frame border is by default set to 1. In the example here, we have an iframe with, an I, with a myframe.html web page inside the 500 by 500 iframe. Okay, so let's try adding an iframe to our index.html document. We'll first need to create a basic HTML page called frame.html. Then we'll use that page inside the frame. Okay, so we'll come over to our folder here and we're going to create a new HTML document. So new text document and we're going to remove everything and we're going to call it, we'll call it frame.html. All right, so now that we create it, yes, we're going to open it up in Notepad++. And inside Notepad++, we're going to specify the doc type. So open tag, exclamation mark, doc type, capitals, HTML, close the tag off. Now we'll open up our HTML tag and we'll set the lang to equal en-us, close the tag. And we'll do our matching closing HTML tag. Now we'll just do a quick title and we'll set the title to be a frame exclamation mark. We'll close off our title. All right. Now we'll do our body, body, close off our body. Okay. So inside of our body, we're just going to put a simple H1 title. Uh, we'll set the actual title to equal this is a frame and we'll close that off close off the tag and inside the heading we're going to say this is an iframe and then we'll close our h1 tag all right now we'll do a quick paragraph as well so we'll do a p tag we, we can load this inside another web page. All right, and we'll close off our p tag. All right, so we'll save this, and this is going to be our frame.html. Now we come back to our index. We've got to insert the frame. So underneath our form section, we'll create another heading. We'll do a h2, and we'll call it i frames. And then we'll do a slash h2, close it off. And now we're going to create our iframe. So to create our iframe, we type the tag iframe. And we've got to set the source attribute to equal the frame.html file that we created just a second ago. We're going to set the uh, width to equal uh, 500 and the height to equal 500 and we'll set the name of the frame to equal my frame and this will come in handy a little bit later now we'll close off the opening tag and then we'll also come down to the next line and close the iframe tag off all right so we've created our iframe we can save this and we can come over to our web browser refresh our page and we can scroll down to our iframe and as you can see we've got this border going on around the frame it's a pretty big frame and it says this is an iframe that's the page that we loaded inside the frame so cool it's all working now i think this is a little too big so i'm going to make it a little bit smaller so we'll make it a 200 by 200 We'll save that and see how it goes. We'll come back and it's a bit smaller now, a bit easier to, to manage. All right, cool. All right. So as mentioned a couple of times before, we can change the page that's inside an iframe by using the target attribute in a link. To do this, we just set the target to the name of the iframe. In the example, we have the target of the A tag set to my frame, which is the same name attribute for the iframe. Okay, so let's add a link above our iframe to our second page that we created in an earlier tutorial. Alright, so come back to our code. 
and just after our h2 we're going to create an a tag and we're going to set the href to equal second page dot html and we're going to set the target to equal my frame all right and we'll close off that tag now inside of our a tags we're going to say we're going to call the link set frame to second page and then we'll close off our a tag now we'll put in a line break br and we'll have a look at how it looks so we'll come over to our web browser and we have a link refresh and it says set frame to second page so if we quickly uh, if we click this link it'll come to our second page and we can see that oh, it's got, I've got refresh stuck on come back here I'll just remove this out it's refreshing every 10 seconds save that again come back over here and we refresh now uh, we can click this and it'll open up this is my second page this is a paragraph and we're going to say back a page and now we're looking at the current page that we're already on inside of our frame it's looking a bit like a uh, frameception all right cool this concludes our tutorial on forms and iframes. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and I'll try to answer it as best as possible. The next topic we'll be looking at is media. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.